Mm-hmm. A great Monday evening, everyone. Thank you for spending part of it with us. DeMarco Farr, J.B. Long, the head coach of your Los Angeles Rams, Sean McVay, following a week 14 victory. Sunday Night Football, 28-12 over the Seattle Seahawks. And coach, in part as a result, he canceled meetings today. It's a little bit quiet around the facility today. The players getting out of here early and having a little bit longer weekend. Yeah, really, what it was was, uh, you know, they got in, got a workout in, and they uh, got their treatment, and then it gave us a chance to get a jump start on the Cowboys. And so that was really what it was. You know, the guys will still watch the film, and then, you know, we'll be able to consistently hit it throughout the week as we start to implement our parts of the game plan, and then you make sure that you go back and revisit some of the things that'll be relevant for us moving forward and that we can't just kind of brush aside but you know on to the cowboys for us no doubt obviously it's christmas all the stuff in the room i I would expect uh, a lot of christmas cards this week from your fan base for stomping a mud hole in the seahawks in the coliseum that fan base was into it and energized because you were energizing them with your play. Yeah, the guys did a great job. And I thought, uh, you know, two weeks in a row, DeMarco, that the guys had an energy of something that you could feel, you could see it uh, when they got out there. They were ready to go. There was a buzz in the air, even just when you went out for warm-ups. And uh, I thought it showed by the guys just overall energy from the first snap to the, you know, to the finish. And, and I thought it was in all three phases and uh, really pleased with our team. May I ask, how did you find that? I mean, how do you do that midseason? I mean, when you... In, interject energy into a team. How do you do that as a head coach? I think you'd be better. I think you'd be better equipped to answer that than me. You know, I think the players. You know, there's there's something about these guys that you know we have a consistent week of practice, the preparation, the messaging. But you got to find that switch inside you that when you're getting ready to play a physical game like this, uh, that's demanding mentally uh, from the first snap to the last, and you got to have that intentional focus every single snap. Uh, they've ha- they found a way to do that, and and I think it's a credit to the really our veteran leadership. A lot of the guys that kind of you know, drive the bus for our team and, and their focus, their, you know, consistent approach day in and day out and then getting guys ready to go, I think, uh, has been the key to that. Speaking of getting guys ready to go, I mean, here we are in mid-December and it seems like you're in position to put your best roster out there down the stretch in terms of health and the way you came away from last night's win? Yeah, I think we feel good about it, JB. And, and really, it's it's kind of, you know, I think what you've seen now is two weeks in a row where the offense and the defense have been able to play off of one another. You know, you're seeing good, positive performances from both sides. Uh, and I think that's when you can see that complementary football that we talk about all the time. Clearly, we want to avoid those turnovers that we did have offensively. But, you know, to be able to start the game where you're scoring on three or your four possessions, finish it with touchdowns, the, the way the defense was getting off on third downs. I think that's a key formula for being able to play from the front. Then you force teams to be one-dimensional even when they're trying to catch up. And I thought that was key for last night for us, for sure. Do you grade down Cooper Cup for missing a pass? He's a receiver. I mean... I actually give him a plus because he progressed to his number two read there. And actually, you know, I can get on him because he's had such a great game the last couple weeks. If Higby stays down the front side hash, that's exactly where Cup put it, where it was an us or nobody type throw. And if he stays right down that right hash, Higby probably gets another, gets a touchdown right there. Oh, my God. See, he did it again. Wow. Yeah. So Cooper, he can't do anything wrong. He's unbelievable. He's man. Unbelievable. He's um, man. I got a text after the game, um, and it said, it, asking me, has, I guess Sean McVay has found his mojo, right? And I waited, chewed on it, and I said, well, if mojo means they're running the ball better, then yeah, he found his mojo. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, I think, uh, you know, I think our team has, and certainly any time that you're, you're seeing your guys uh, make plays, that they're having fun, they're enjoying themselves, it sure does make it a lot more fun for us as coaches. And, uh, you know, you talk about the rhythm or whatever it might be on both sides of the ball, and I think we've been able to get into a rhythm uh, because of the way that the game has gone based on the way that the players have executed snap in and snap out. He's Sean McVay with DeMarco Farr. I'm J.B. Long. Uh, this is the Coach McVay Show, live from Cal Lutheran in Thousand Oaks. We're looking ahead to week 15 at Dallas. But as a byproduct of what you just said, I mean, I just took a quick scan through the play-by-play, and here, here were your unfavorable down and distances last night. Third and nine, and you hit Higby on that play, which we'll talk about. Yep. You had a first and 20 after a hands to a face, turn that into a, a first down. Yep. And you had a third and 10 on a bobbled exchange on a girly run. Those were your worst situations. Yeah. Few and far between. Yeah. The one that really stands out was when we had the second and five and lost yards on the draw that got us to the third and ten, which, which right. led to then the uh, the interception. But that's a key thing, JB. And, and when you can consistently be in those favorable down and distances, uh, you're able to dictate things. And then, you know, you got the more manageable third downs. We had a couple, you know, a handful of runs that Todd ended up popping on third down uh, that were big conversions that we really hadn't done a good enough job in the previous weeks of, hey, when we get into some of these uh, short 
four yardage type situations. We got to be able to convert. We did that last night, and then for Malcolm to be able to cap it off on a third down run was great. Rampage and the cheerleaders on the field. Was that the only <laughs> snap miss you? Yeah, what the heck was that, man? I'm just glad we didn't get penalized. I'm like, what are we doing? I look over and <laughs> she that's made the uh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Big just glad it didn't get his flag. I, I'm right there with you. I've never you. seen that in my life. Yeah, I said that's a first. Never happened before. Just yeah. that. I football. looked over. I thought to myself, what is going on? <laughs> what could happen now? <laughs> Some unbelievable individual efforts, and we can mention three of them at, at once here. I think Higby, Woods, and Gurley, the stat last night that just kind of blew all of our minds. First NFL trio with 100 scrimmage yards apiece in back-to-back games in 19 years. Wow. Almost that's amazing. I did not. Well, I've never heard that stat either. That's wow, a good one right there. Woods and Gurley, Arizona, and now the win over Seattle. Awesome. Yeah, pretty good stuff. I, I don't think I would have picked that trio coming into the well, year. that's an interesting point. I, I guess, I mean, I, should I be surprised by Higby or no? No. I, yeah. I think, uh, you know, he's getting an opportunity, really. What you're seeing is a guy capitalizing on the opportunity and something that he probably should have gotten more chances earlier on. But he uh, he's always demonstrated the capability, and now it's great for him to be able to see it come to life uh, in the real games. And uh, he's got a lot of confidence making big plays, and I think it's not exclusive to, you know, the third downs. He's making plays on first and second down. He's doing stuff with the ball, without the ball, and uh, he's showing why he's one of the more complete tight ends in this league. I believe that. And, like, oh, yeah, if you're not catching the pass, go block climb. You know, yeah. No, How about your day? Yeah. He, had, he had a heck of a day. He's really strung together two great weeks to Marco. What's the ceiling there? I mean, I was thinking today about, I mean, he's not going to have 100 yards receiving every week or a touchdown in every game, but, like, are we rethinking what he's capable of in the yeah, NFL? I think he's a legitimate guy that when you get into, you know, some of those situations where, you know, you got to account for him on all three downs. And now and now when you start to have to really say, okay, you like to get your play action going, you like to be able to do some different things, where in a lot of instances that tight end is used as a blocker. So now you're really operating with sometimes three and four eligibles that then makes it easier for the defense to be able to change some of their principles now that you have to account for all five eligibles because of the way that he's gotten involved, because of the way that Todd's gotten involved in the last couple weeks, now you're saying, all right, you got you know your three receivers or you know your two receivers and two tight ends, and then your back that you're you're having to account for, and you know you want to make them defend all five eligibles. When that dude is stepping out of tackles, man, I mean. The Rams are a tough out, period. But when he's doing that, I mean, when he's challenging people and winning, I don't know what you do defensively. It's big time, you know. And you see that he's gotten some open space where you can feel he runs a lot better than a lot of people think, too. I mean, he's a big guy that plays in line, but, you know, you can detach him from the core. He made a great play on the third down on the first drive of the game uh, that got us down to the one-yard line. He wanted to get Malcolm a touchdown because he had him on his fantasy squad or something like that. But, uh... (laughs) You know, he, he's done a great job, and I think he's demonstrated really the ability to do a lot of different things, and, and that's a big-time asset to us. We will hear that play, the third and nine conversion, when we come back, and then we'll talk about Jared Goff's swagger last night at the Coliseum, back-to-back great performances by QB1. Just getting started on the Coach McVay Show, Week 15 edition on ESPN LA 710. They put tricks out to the right, including Tyler Hippie. Play clock at six as Goff comes up to mark his command. Now with three. He has to hurry back to the shotgun. Here's the snap. He fakes the throw down the right side. Now launches. Complete to the ten. Stumbling to the five. Higby touchdown at the one. They fake the receiver screen, which has become their bread and butter. And they go deep to Higby the tight end. First and goal at the one ram. All right, welcome back to Thousand Oaks and the Coach McVay Show with DeMarco Farr, J.B. Long, the head coach of your Rams who called that play, Sean McVay. Self-scouting was kind of the phrase that came to mind when I saw it in real time. I mean, like I said, a bread and butter there. It's become a staple of your offense, but you got the Seahawks leaning. Yeah, it, it had been something that uh, had been a successful play for us and something that we've utilized when we've played the, uh, the Seahawks in years past as well. And so... Uh, Great job by Jared being able to execute a good sell by Higby and, and to get that ball up and down and then to be able to get it down. I think it was a 33-yard gain that he ended up getting right there. and It was a big play for us and, and got it down to the one, and then Malcolm punched it in. I wrote this down for that play. Are, are they great salesmen or good liars? To, what to do you sell think? the screen. I mean, look, it worked either way, but yeah. man, wow. Salesman has a better connotation to it. <laughs> what a great, I mean, what a great sell job. I mean, did you kind of know they would bite because maybe we've run this play before? I think you had hoped, you know, yeah. but I thought it was all, it, it goes back to the execution, you know, and, and Griffin's an aggressive corner, does a great job coming up when asked to do that in, in some of these, you know, situations where he might have to come up and tackle, you know, as a thirds corner he was right there. And, and um, you know, that had been something that we had done, that had been something that we had done the previous week against Arizona in a 
similar type situation. And so, um, you know, it was a nice compliment to some things that we had done versus them and in recent weeks. So it was a good play by those guys. Subsequently.